are. And this particular pathogenesis test we also conducted in the uh, this uh, Nagpur mandarin stem also. You can see here the typical uh, brown lesion which is causing in the different stem portion of our citrus species. So uh, the morphological features I have already discussed. Then again, now coming to the molecular identification. What are the different molecular methods that has been that can be conducted uh, to identify these different Phytophthora species? So you can see here for the fungal identification, this internal transcribe spacer region has been identified as the one of the signature region for the identification of uh, uh, this uh, fungal species. This comparison of uh, ITS regions mean internal transcribe spacer region. This comparison of this ITS region is widely used in taxonomy, molecular phylogeny, as well as identification, proper identification of plant pathogenic fungi. So see here the different regions. One is 16S region uh, that is conserved. Uh, this ITS1 and ITS2, these are the, I mean, two regions which are rapidly evolving. So that allows uh, they are also present in a high copy number and they are very easy to amplify through PCR and they are having high degree of variation even between the closely related species. So these things allows us to amplify ITS region for the identification of various groups of uh, plant pathogenic fungi, not only Phytophthora. Hmm. So uh, basically what we used to do, we uh, amplify through PCR this internal transcribe spacer regions and then by adopting these two technology, one is RFLP that is restriction fragment length polymorphism by using uh, a series of restriction enzymes and by directly doing the sequencing we can uh, we come to know what are the species because different phytophthora species have their different uh, uh, sequences so by doing directly sequencing the its region we, we can identify the phytophthora species and in case of this rflp technique uh, after this uh, digestion with a range of restriction enzyme if characteristics generally a characteristic profile we used to get, we also call it as a fingerprint, typical fingerprint for a Phytophthora species, which is produced and which is very useful for a species discrimination. So in this way, we generally identify a particular Phytophthora species. Here you can see this ITS uh, RFLP, uh, this profile, or the different fingerprint, you can say, uh, for this uh, particular species. I don't know, one, one rectangle is coming up. Can you see my slide uh, very clearly? Is it visible? It is visible, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't know, something is coming up, some rectangle or no, it's coming up in between. No, sir, it is visible, sir. It's visible, no, it's fine. So here you can see the 11 different Phytophthora species we have identified through this uh, technique. And it is showing uh, a particular species is showing a characteristic profile uh, by which we come to know uh, Phytophthora, for example, Phytophthora nicotiani and Phytophthora palmivora and Phytophthora citrophthora. See here, the three different species is showing three different fingerprints. So by doing this technique, you will become a pakka. So if the, the, these are the different Phytophthora species. This is not the same isolates. So, of course, with the increasing amounts of movement of planting material and the changing climatic conditions, we must be aware of the different outbreaks of these phytophthora diseases. And this ITS RFLP system, which we have, uh, I mean, standardized or developed, this will certainly assist in phytosanitary legislation or quick identification of the phytophthora induced diseases. We also uh, developed uh, some of the uh, scar markers, scar markers, especially those uh, students which have a background of a little bit of biotechnology and molecular bio biology. Nowadays, scar marker has been used uh, routinely for the identification of uh, various groups of pathogens. This scar marker also we have developed in case of Phytophthora nicotiani. And this is one of the duplex or multiplex PCR we have developed to identify the Phytophthora disease along with some citrus greening. Citrus greening, I will come uh, at later stages in my presentation. but. This citrus greening bacteria also infects the root system. So how to identify both the uh, pathogen in a single go, in one go. So this is the technique. We call it as duplex PCR or multiplex PCR can be utilized to identify both the pathogens in the root system. Uh, coming to the, this, uh, your ITS uh, sequencing. Uh, these are the, uh, by using different uh, primers like ITS 6 and 4 we can uh, amplify it and then we can do the direct uh, sequencing. 
by outsourcing there nowadays a lot of companies are there which will help you to get the sequences and uh, after getting the sequences we we submitted uh, nearly uh, 150 different particular uh, species uh, different zones starting from not only ITS apart from ITS there are other signature regions also like beta tubulin uh, your uh, elongation factor one alpha and then uh, some mitochondrial specific genes like cox1 and cox2 uh, cytochrome oxidase so those things can also be amplified because may, in in case of closely related phytophthora species sometimes it becomes really difficult i mean to identify uh, at the species level mm. so to uh, to have those uh, things uh, clarified you need to go for multi locus sequencing and we also constructed this phylogenetic tree. This is uh, let's see here depicting the relationship uh, between different phytophthora species. This is the ITS based phylogenetic tree we have con uh, constructed. You can see here the different uh, clades. Uh, this phytophthora nicotiani belongs to the clade one, phytophthora palmivora belongs to clade uh, four, and the citrophthora and tropicalis there in clade two. So, um, by uh, doing this maximum likelihood uh, analysis, uh, we'll come to know. Uh, our our species of interest um, and uh, for for doing this first of all whatever isolates you are having you first you, know, you have to get the sequences done and uh, but uh, by going in the in the blast search you can get the similarity i mean how much uh, sequence similarity is there then you can get some of the similar sequences and then you can carry out this phylogenetic analysis by using some softwares like mega and all uh, Then also we uh, developed a uh, technology for uh, this diagnostics of phytophthora directly from the tissue sample or in the soil or in the water. Now suppose uh, if somebody gives you a, a tissue samples or a, uh, water samples from your orchard, right from your orchard, or in that case some root samples, uh, and then uh, uh, our molecular techniques, which will be very sensitive that will permit or allow direct identification of the pathogen from your samples from the different substrates. So those uh, types of uh, techniques we have developed, uh, mostly PCR based, and we are uh, routinely using, especially for, for our nursery samples, we are screening whether the samples contains our phytophthora species or not. Real-time qPCR also, RT-PCR nowadays everybody knows in the era of COVID-19, RT-PCR is uh, becomes a very common thing uh, for this phytophthora species also even I'll when I'll discuss that uh, citrus greening and uh, HLB I'll come to discuss in more detail about this uh, RT-PCR technique that thing we have standardized uh, for identification of phytophthora in different substrates whether it is soil whether it is roots or whether it is water sample from your orchard so now we have discussed mostly about the diagnostic methods and how uh, the phytophthora species can be identified but the major thing is now then the question come how to control what are the control methods one thing let me tell you that there is no cure for phytophthora once an area is infested with phytophthora it remains always infested it cannot be eradicated completely hmm. so if somebody tells you that phytophthora has come already and i have a uh, foolproof method which can cure 100 percent so it is it is very difficult uh, actually once phytophthora comes it remains always infested so what the, there are some control options of course i mean those who are into uh, the subject of plant pathology they must be knowing the principles uh, of a plant disease control which is based on exclusion resistance and then chemical control we have some uh, biological control Exclusion generally uses uh, uh, based on the using of uh, use of these pre nursery plants. Then we have got some cultural measures like high budding or planting, then raised bed plantations, resistance uh, uh, comprising of using uh, use of this uh, tolerant rootstock. We can use this marker estate selection uh, technique also uh, to get some resistant rootstocks. Of course, uh, chemical, uh, some new chemistries we have to keep on searching to have a uh, good control uh, over the pathogen. And biology, bi for biocontrol, especially the native biogens, one should identify uh, to have a very good control over the particular disease or the pathogen. But the best way to control the integrated use of strategies, what we call as integrated disease management. In case of uh, Insect pest, we call it as IPM, integrated pest management. Likewise, in case of our disease 
we also call it as integrated disease management. And this biomonitoring of Phytophthora species is very important. Here you can see, I mean, um, whether uh, it is feasible to carry out the, whatever uh, management practices or the control strategies you are having or not. Before that, in an orchard, you have to see the population level of the Phytophthora. If the population level goes in excess of 10 to uh, 20 propagules per cc of soil, which is considered as a potential damaging, they can then you can go for whatever control measures which are available. So let me show you what are the control measures uh, available uh, for the Phytophthora uh, diseases at nursery level. These are the things, basically all this uh, technique uh, are directed towards uh, the soil sterilization method. Uh, this soil sterilization, then uh, we've got uh, soil fumigation, then you can have fabricate the steam sterilization unit also. Especially in our Nagpur condition, when the, in the, during the summer, the temperature goes uh, beyond 45 degrees Celsius. So, uh, by taking advantage of this particular temperature, we have developed uh, this uh, technology of soil solarization, which to keep this 100 micron, uh, this polythene sheet over our potting mixture. And it not only uh, kills that uh, all the fungal spores, some harmful bacteria, even nematode and harmful weed seeds also get killed. So, uh, we used to keep it for four to six months. After four to six months, we used to take out this polythene sheet and whatever potting mixture, uh, is there we generally use for our plantation of our nursery plants similarly in case of soil uh, fumigation one uh, this registered molecule diazomate granules also uh, available in the market which you can use for fumigation purposes this uh, uh, we have developed a containerized nursery system what uh, we call it as uh, uh, in our case primary nursery secondary nursery so by following the citrus uh, badud uh, certification programs uh, these things uh, we have developed only thing uh, you have to take care that um, uh, you have to see that any uh, water splash or any one of the rainy season comes rain splash should not happen because with the rain splash and water splash pathogens also get transmitted from one uh, container to other container so this um, by putting this uh, stone dust or boulders uh, you can eliminate all those things so right from the primary nursery to secondary nursery everything should be in a container so that's why we call, call it as containerized nursery system so those uh, by doing this container nursery system uh, phytophthora species of phytophthora infection can be eliminated Another advantage is that by after taking so much precautions also, even one or two plants become infected with Phytophthora strato, we can discard. But had it been an open nursery system, you could not have done that. So this is the beauty of continuous nursery system. And in the orchard, at orchard level, uh, these are the some of the cultural practices we have to do. Uh, this budding height is very important. You know, in case of low budding, we observed that gamosis incidence is much more in case of uh, deep planting or in case of low budding. And uh, this water management is very key, as I've already mentioned that uh, Phytophthora basically is a water loving fungus. So drip uh, system, those who are having uh, this uh, drip irrigation system is uh, very good uh, for the management of Phytophthora. Otherwise, in case of uh, your direct irrigation, such type of double ring method of irrigation should be advocated. Mm -hmm. Only thing is that you should see that uh, the trunk portion of your uh, tree should not be in direct contact with the water. If it is uh, become direct, uh, if it comes in direct contact with the water, then every chance will be there. The uh, water containing Phytophthora will get into your, the plant system and slowly, slowly all those infection or all those symptoms it will show. Another uh, technology known as raised bed or broad ridge planting, you can see here where the plants will be there uh, in the raised bed. Uh, so it, it will promote a natural drainage. Uh, no water will stagnate uh, uh, in the basin region of the plant. So automatically your phytophthora infection will be much lower. We have also screened uh, some of the commercially important rootstocks against phytophthora root rot under both artificially inoculated conditions and also in the um, natural conditions. And uh, 
our results uh, showed that out of 57 rootstock uh, strains which you have uh, evaluated these uh, alemo smooth flat civil this argentina trifoliate orange these are showed uh, tolerant reactions and in case of this field evaluation of uh, these results we are talking about nagpur mandarin plants in, and uh, in case of this uh, nagpur mandarin on different rootstocks among the exotic rootstock the c35 strain then x 639 and LMO showed the least number of gamosis lesions. So these are the some of the, I mean, rootstocks which can be used uh, as a resistant or tolerant rootstock. Better to use the term tolerant, not as resistant because nothing is universally 100% uh, resistance against Phytophthora. So in a particular place, um, depending on the cultivars and the specific rootstocks that we identified and some of the rootstocks which is showing tolerant reactions to particular whatever, whether it is Phytophthora Nicotiani, whether it is Phytophthora Pamivora, that, that kind of rootstock should be identified and used and against Phytophthora DVS. Now coming to the chemical control, these copper fungicides, uh, as you know, uh, comprising of this Bodo paste and Bodo mixture that can be used as a prophylactic measures and systemic fungicides like your metaloxyl or nephinoxam, cymoxanil, then dimethomoph, uh, Fossetile aluminium that is in since long it is being used all our uh, systemic has been found very effective those things can be applied both as foliar spray as well as soil drench especially when you use uh, the metalaxyl group of fungicide it should be applied as a soil drench of course the alternating the uh, use of both the fungicides should be considered to minimize the risk of fungicide resistance that is always there it is always better to alternate you should not use the single fungicides time and again. So these are the different uh, fungicides we have been identified um, against uh, uh, Phytophthora. Uh, I've already mentioned about copper fungicides, which is contact fungicide, and some of the systemics like your uh, metalaxyl mancujem. Nowadays we call it as mephinoxam metalaxyl mix. Then uh, fossetile aluminium, dimethomorph, dimethomorphic so those things can be used against Phytophthora disease. Coming to the biological control, as I've already mentioned that some of the native, uh, these promising strains of uh, whether it is Trichoderma or Pseudomonas should be identified on the local basis and those things should be, um, uh, I mean, routinely used in your Phytophthora management. It is not audible, sir. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Rudgar, there is some problem, no, with the... Uh, uh, problem? It is... I think it is not. Uh, sir, it is not, not our audible. problem, sir. Okay. okay, maybe some okay. signal. Uh, the signal problem. Distortions will be there. Okay, let us wait. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understood we are waiting for that. 
Okay, right. It seems that there is network problem. He will come back in two minutes. Hello, am I audible, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. There are some network issue. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Now. Please, sir. Please. Can you see my presentation right now? Yes. Okay, I'll start where I left. Uh, so these are some of the, I mean, uh, trichoderma species I was talking about by control agent. We have identified uh, things like uh, NRCABA44 and NRCABA29. These are the, some of the improved uh, this trichoderma strains we have identified. We have also identified through molecular techniques uh, by this uh, ITS and TAF1 uh, amplification. We also conducted this, uh, once we shortly listed uh, our trichoderma species isolates, then we uh, screened uh, those isolates against uh, uh, this uh, phytophthora root rot in our pot culture studies. Uh, you see the results of uh, this NRC APA44. Uh, see, uh, this particular stain, one of the major characteristics is that it, it, it coils uh, around the, the, this trichoderma mycelium and it, it, it kills it. So one mycoparasitic, this particular strain of uh, this trichoderma arginum, we call it as NRCAP44 strain, we have identified. And we also mm, made a talc-based formulation out of that. And we are regularly supplying it to our end users, that is citrus growers and the farmers. Uh, this particular, and uh, we have uh, uh, studied the shelf life uh, also, even after eight months also, you can see here, uh, uh very good count generally we used to get and this uh, growth enhancement also um, occurs in by using this our ccri trichoderma species this particular uh, our talc based formulation of trichoderma can be used uh, uh, in nursery stage by, uh, for the control of gamosis in the orchard and this soil application uh, in case of soil application you have to mix it with some organic substrate like uh, this farmyard manure or vermicompost. So that one. And uh, in our uh, disease planting material production, we are uh, mixing the, our this particular uh, mycoparasitic uh, trichoderma strains in all our nursery plants before giving it to the farmers. Uh, right now, our uh, research activity is centered around uh, identification of endophytic bacteria, you know, uh, in nowadays, a uh, uh, lot of research uh, interest has been generated uh, for the use of uh, endophytic bacteria and fungi, and some of the uh, promising strains of endophytic uh, fungi and bacteria were identified, and uh, uh, we're trying to, we're now conducting uh, our uh, glasshouse and pot culture studies, and if we come up with some uh, good uh, endophytic bacteria, our ultimate objective is to um, see its performance under field condition and if you get satisfactory field condition against the phytophthora species, then which will uh, mass propagate it and before releasing it to, uh, our farmers. 
So this is the IDM uh, package. As I already mentioned, for phytophthora disease, no single uh, method uh, will be enough. You have to take integrated disease management. So these are the whatever uh, techniques and methods or the management uh, measures, uh, control measures. We have taught. So we have we try to put uh, put it in a capsule format. Uh, so in in the nursery, starting for your soil solarization and other. Treatment and in the orchard level, some of the uh, along with some preventive measures, some curative measures uh, for the um, uh, control of different phytophthora diseases can be undertaken. And we have come up uh, with a publication also for integrated management of phytophthora diseases. So uh, this was uh, about all about phytophthora. Now uh, some of other important uh, fungal diseases uh, I'd like to mention. This is the dry root. In case of in case of Sadguti root orange, uh, you know, uh, this dry root rot has been identified as one of the major diseases. Uh, major uh, actually, the problem. This uh, particular pathogen generally, you know, comes or rather infect uh, those plants which are physiologically <laughs> madam can you see my slides any problem no problem, no problem. Okay, okay 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 go ahead there are some network issues going on i don't know so somebody my... is unmuted Ah, my net is going slow, running slow. No, it's okay. So, uh, unlike Phytophthora diseases, this dry root rot can be distinguished from Phytophthora food rot root rot. Uh, uh, actually, it infects the larger roots. As I mentioned, in case of Phytophthora, Phytophthora uh, generally infects uh, the feeder roots. See here, I mean, in citrus plant, there are two kinds of root system will be there. Uh, one is the structural roots. We call it a step root. And along with structural roots, the feeder roots. And phytophthora generally selectively infects those feeder roots or the fibrous roots. Whereas in case of fusarium infection, the infection starts from the structural roots. Uh, in case of phytophthora, uh, in, in the disintegration of uh, uh, structural roots will be very less. But whereas in case of you know, fusarium infection, you know this type of structural roots will be get infected. Uh, it generally affects the larger roots and the trunk below the bud union without oozing any gum. But in case of phytophthora infection, that gum oozing will be there. And disease develops only when the trees have been weakened by some other stress factors. You know, uh, when uh, especially whether it is this, that particular stress factor we have to identify on which region, whether it is the presence of other viruses, whether it is uh, the presence of hard pan below the soil surface or whether uh, some other uh, climatic stress factor is there. So whenever that particular stress factor will be there, this fusarium will come and attack that particular root system. You know, some of the samples we, at one point of time, we, you know, we got some of the samples from Kadapa region and we uh, tried to see, see a lot of fusarium species we could uh, isolate and uh, we identified both, see here both Macroconidia and Microconidia is there. Uh, I think Ramana is there. They have also identified some of the improved uh, uh, biogens also like your uh, Trichoderma species they are using. But still, it remains a, I mean, very uh, many huge problem, especially in the Sadguti suit on area, that uh, dry root rot, which is caused uh, by Fusarium solani, rather. And again, for its management, as I've already mentioned, correction of stress factors or the whatever predisposing factors uh, uh, is there. Uh, you have to provide some uh, root drainage, soil aeration, and treatment with some benzimidazole fungicides. But it will, I mean, all these uh, will work at certain extent. If the infection level goes a particular point, if the 50% of your root system get damaged, then it's very difficult to, I mean, rejuvenate a infected tree. Uh, then another important infection is uh, their anthragnose, which is caused by uh, fungus uh, like Polytotricum glorosporides. You can see here the different infection level uh, in case of Nagpur mandarin, in Darjeeling mandarin, in Pino mandarin, in Mosambi sweet orange. Uh, in severe infection, it causes wither tip, and you can see here the mummified fruit. All this, and those uh, particular Polytotricum glorosporides are also responsible for the food drop. Hmm. See here the uh, particular conidia and uh, 
some of the structural features, morphological features of uh, palatotricum. Here you can see in the slide. Mm. This also causes, a, uh, in, uh, I mean, melody known as twig blight. Uh, along with, in, in case of twig blight, along with palatotricum, the botrytiplody and fusarium is also involved. Okay. See here, the, uh, it also causes the pre harvest food drop. Mm. See here, the amount of in the we have identified that the more the number of i mean the the uh, intensity of uh, day dude the more the day dude the more will be the food drop in particular object because all those fungi this colotodicum diplodia and into a limited extent formosin and fusarium also they survives in these day dudes so day dude pruning is a must once after harvesting it is always recommended uh, uh, by uh, pruning the dead roots, we are eliminating all the pathogens which is responsible for drop in your orchard. So, pruning is a must. You can see here, I mean, after pruning, you can uh, spray some of the benzimidazole group of fungicides like uh, your carbendazine, 500 methyl. Uh, of course, Bordeaux mixture is always there. Uh, COC. Nowadays, new group of uh, fungicides are coming up uh, like of azoxystrobin, dif difnoconazole, those amistra top. Uh, new, new, especially the estrobilin group of fungicides are coming that can also be used. But I mean, uh, this all these fungi, like your polytodicum, whether it is polytodicum, whether it is diplodia, it will colonize though that particular plant which is physiologically weak and nutritionally pure. So, your orchard should be nutritionally very perfect. Hmm. Otherwise, I mean, these infections will keep on coming and ultimately that will lead to your food drop problem. Another infection known as uh, citrus scab, I'll uh, quickly uh, run through uh, all these uh, um, diseases. Uh, this is co uh, caused by Elsino fauceti. These are the typical culture you can see here uh, in the culture media. And such uh, these scabby lesions will be found, especially this is a problem in Rangpur lime rootstock. Wherever this Rangpur lime rootstock is there, Rangpur lime is the most susceptible species for this scab infection. And uh, this uh, disease uh, generally coincides with the emergence of new flush. So, prophylactic sprays of copper fungicides or methyl thiocyanate, uh, uh, it can be used. Of course, removal of old infected leaves and twigs is always there uh, to eliminate uh, the source of infection. So, this is uh, a typical slide. See here, some of, some of those symptoms are very confusing. Sometimes it is very becomes very difficult to understand whether it is a scab infection or canker infection. See a very nice photograph is there in case of scab infection in the leaf, this protuberance will be there. Just like uh, if somebody, I mean, uh, put a pin over a leaf, uh, this particular type symptom will be there. But in case of canker, this water soaking will be there. See here, a typical, this water soaking will be there around uh, this brownish lesion. So once water soaking is there, that means the indication of bacterial infection, mostly it is citrus canker, that is xanthomonas. But if water soaking is not there, only the scabby lesions uh, is there, just like this one, that means the citrus scab is there. Because some of the things, Rangpur lime, uh, you know, these are uh, both susceptible for both canker as well as scab. So we have to identify uh, which one is infecting that particular species. So another uh, important infection, of course, it is uh, important in case of northeastern region and some parts of the poor Mandarin region. This is powdery mildew. Uh, Oidium tingitaninum, uh, pathogen uh, has been identified as the causal organism. Uh, see here, this is the uh, one picture from the Jampu Hills area of uh, Tripura. Uh, we, we have identified uh, one of the major region of decline for that uh, uh, region. The so forest management, you have to go for regular pruning, uh, especially the water suit. Water suits uh, the most colonizing uh, areas for the water mildew uh, fungi. And then spraying and dusting of fine sulfur dust uh, is also important. Uh, sulfur is one of the important components towards the control of uh, powdery mildews. And some of the fungicides can also be used regularly to keep the disease under check. And this one new disease we have identified uh, some couple of years back. Uh, this is known as citrus black spot. This is uh, uh, Philo uh, sticta citricarpa. Uh, this is caused by a fungus known as Guignardia. Uh, up this Wignadi or Philostricta, uh, we have reported for the first time. The it has got a large incubation period, you know, especially in our case, uh, it is a major problem in case of um, reef crop uh, because one after infection, the symptom development takes five to six months. So, most of the time, the same symptom manifests in the 
already which is you can see here i i, I have identified the, uh, a lot of infected fruits uh, uh, in the market itself now oh, see here this these uh, vendors are selling uh, those fruits and within these uh, fruits many of the fruits will be there which is having typical symptoms even in the um, some of the stores also we can get this this is called as uh, citrus black spot it is that it is characterized by the appearance of this small black liquid here if you have a very close look uh, under the microscope you can see the typical the, the reproductive uh, structure uh, which is a uh, characteristics for this particular fungi so for its management you have to uh, do the leaf litter management uh, and some of the fungicides like your uh, copper based or nowadays tropilurin group of fungicides can be utilized also for its management this is another uh, fungal infection known as uh, greasy spot you can see a typical greasy like lesions will be there firstly it will appear in the uh, back side of the leaf then um, once the infection uh, increases then it will uh, can be seen in the uh, front portion also uh, see at the infection level in mosambi sweet orange pomelo nagpur mandarin khasi mandarin we have identified that uh, fungus as a, a microsporula citri this is the typical conidial structure again uh, for its management of course uh, good sanitation practices and use of some of the fungicide spray program is there good agriculture practices is very important uh, and order the sanitation and most of the fungus which i am talking about for the last 2 3 diseases this uh, most of the pathogen survived in the leaf litters so fallen leaves should be eliminated from your orchard to get rid of such a infection Uh, this is another infection known as uh, alternaria brown spot you can see of course it is mainly a problem in 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 nursery stages where uh, rough lemon is grown in uh, we have observed in several nurseries in rough lemon nurseries such uh, infection is there and to a limited extent uh, in some of the kino mandarin and even nagpur mandarin also alternaria uh, this leaf spot will be there it's not a, not a major pathogen but one should be alert to get rid of this pathogens and now i will describe some of the foliar pathogens which exist in the high rainfall and high humid regions like in northeastern uh, region of our country uh, this is a uh, fail disease uh, which is known as septobasidium pseudopelicetus it is a crust like basidium mycetes which grows on the branches uh, of the trees and and uh, it's a unique actually it's a plant insect fungus association Uh, if you remove uh, this uh, feltis growth you can see some of the scale insects uh, inside that uh, particular fungus so those things of course mechanical removal is the key and uh, pruning of the affected branches and spraying some of the uh, copper based fungicides like your coc or bodo picture uh, can uh, solve this purpose another disease this is uh, milanos and this is caused by diaphotis citri of course this is a major disease in case of grapefruit wherever grapefruit is cultivated this particular uh, uh, symptoms will come in pomelo also uh, if, uh, any person who visits uh, the northeastern the or eastern part they will come up to such a, uh, such type of symptoms with with the, with the rain splash with the with the uh, rain trickling down all the fungal spores also trickle down uh, with the rains and causing such type of tear stain kind of symptoms so again for its management you have to prune out and on you have to burn all those dead roots uh, followed by application of some of the basic fungicides uh, like your any copper based or even systemic also you can do this is a, again uh, a disease known as pink disease uh, which is white incrustation ultimately it will uh, form a pinkish color the spore color will be pink that's why it is called pink color uh, again it will be it is generally found in the uh, northeastern region of our country Uh, pruning of affected branches and spraying of copper fungicides generally we advocate uh, lichens and mosses also as i already mentioned these are the problems basically with uh, the high rainfall areas with, where uh, i mean uh, with the prevailing high humidity all these uh, things comes this lichens and mosses even sooty molds also you can see here uh, Well, with the infestation of uh, this uh, scale insects, uh, uh, some of the sucking pests like black fly or white flies, these sooty molds grows. With the with the, uh, with the honeydew secretion at its subjects, this capnodium citri grows. Uh, not only in the leaf surface, in the fruit surface also. And these are the some of the algal infections 
which you have identified and for its again for its management copper using uh, use of copper fungicides uh, is the key uh, either you can spray 1% bodo mixture or copper oxychloride and uh, you can improve the your management by um, adding some of the commercially available uh, detergent like sandovit or tpol uh, to have a i mean by uh, forcefully uh, spraying over the infected portion some of the i mean uh, the mycelial layer can be eliminated these are some of the wood rotting fungi you can see here the ganoderma it is it is common in the uh, some parts of andhra also even sadguri in old sinai orchards this kind of uh, infection uh, uh, can be seen ganoderma this sigophyllum daldenia all sorts of uh, wood rotting fungus can be there so either you have to mechanically remove it and once after removal you have to put some bodo paste and some copper paste fungicide over it now those uh, were about uh, the fungal infection some of the basic bacterial infections now i'll uh, describe first and foremost is the citrus canker as you know as i have already mentioned see here whatever bacterial infection is there along with the uh, this uh, lesion some water soaking will be there here you can see in the fruit the acid lime fruit some water soaking is there especially in the initial phases hmm. of course the as the lesions age this uh, water soaking will go so this is the uh, colony of janthomona citri subspecies citri nowadays it is known as janthomona citri subspecies citri i mean it has undergone lot of uh, your taxonomic and nomenclature changes we have also identified this particular uh, bacteria through uh, this molecular technique pcr based identification and as far as resistance is uh, concerned most of the your acid lime group are the most susceptible uh, along with some grapefruit this citrus paradisi and arnotolia is the most susceptible and some resistant group consist of uh, this uh, kumquat i mean things like kumquat and some of the uh, particular citron cultivar are found highly resistant and we also uh, try to search resistance uh, in acid lime but uh, unfor unfortunately uh, all the 87 acid lime clones whatever we are having you know in our cc condition we, we found is uh, susceptible uh, still searching for resistant acid lime clone mm -hmm. so all the acid lime uh, presently we are having whatever we are having mostly susceptible to citrus canker and leaf miner leaf miner is not the biological vector actually but it facilitate Uh, the uh, spreading of uh, citrus canker from the infected to the healthy one so to get rid of citrus canker the leaf miner management also should be there so uh, for the disease management use first and foremost you have to use the canker free nursery stock and uh, then we have to prune and destroy the infected twigs and uh, some 3 uh, to 4 sprays this particular disease is uh, more serious during the rainy season because it's basically uh, the bacteria spreads through rain splash so during the rainy season in the uh, period to june to say august september so we have to do three to four sprays of copper oxychloride along with copper oxychloride some commercially available antibiotic also streptocycline 100 ppm 100 ppm means 1 gram in 10 liters solution you can spray it and this sprinkling or spraying of ninke solution is uh, quite useful especially in the nursery uh, conditions of course it generally it encourages the vegetative growth and the plant remains healthy so automatically canker bacteria Mm, will be less so another important bacterial disease um, this is citrus greening uh, this is a very uh, confusing uh, disease earlier uh, uh, it, it was categorized as a viral disease but nowadays it is confirmed that citrus greening is due to bacteria it is called as uh, candidatus liver vector uh, in in it is another name is wang long ming it is a chinese name meaning yellow shoot disease so internationally the disease is known as this wang long min hlb and it is characterized by uh, many uh, typical symptoms here you can see the the infected plants will show yellow shoot and it will show a blotchy mottle this is the most diagnostic symptom for citrus greening of course the blotchy mottle symptom can only be seen during the winter months once the temperature goes up then it is i mean uh, very uh, this particular symptoms will become total yellow you won't find this blotchy mottle mm. so especially in the month of say december january february this particular symptoms can be seen mostly in the mosambi sweet orange in the sweet orange group rather this particular blotchy mottle is more pronounced uh, it is also cause uh, uh, fruit drops in case of severe greening infected plants will come up to this kind of uh, fruit drop canopy thinning will be there 
and this lobe sided fruit mm. in our nagpur mandarin also this styler in grinning is a very characteristic symptoms actually uh, the name uh, grinning is derived from this particular symptom even after ripening also the lower end remains green that's why the the, the disease is known as citrus grinning mm. here you can see one of the pomelo uh, fruit is infected pomelo fruit lobe sided uh, there uh, see the infected portions didn't take the color it's a pink uh, flesh uh, pomelo fruits but see here in the infected portion it remains uh, uh, not uh, dark color it's a normal white color this is again uh, and in, if you cut such of infect a severely infected fruit you can see the, the all the seeds will be aborted hmm, the about inside seeds will be aborted so this is another uh, characteristic symptom of uh, citrus greening and it's a uh, very serious disease you know uh, in in usa it was first uh, identified during the year 2005 so now after 15 years almost their production is half it's less than half actually so uh, it's a very serious disease and lot of uh, this historical records are there with the onset of symptoms the trees become generally unproductive within two to five years and in different countries, a uh, lot of trees have been destroyed uh, through um, this particular disease. Uh, the causal organism has been identified as uh, Liberiopter asiaticus, and in the African country, it is caused. Uh, it is organism is Africanus, whereas in the American countries like Brazil, it is Americanus. Uh, but nowadays, it's Silas. That means Canada's Liberiopter asiaticus is the most predominant pathogen. Uh, it belongs uh, to the Rhizobiaceae family. Uh, it's a gram-negative proteobacteria. It is uh, 1.2 mv genome. Uh, it is fastidious. The major difficulty with citrus greening is that we cannot culture the bacteria. You know, uh, as in case of citrus canker, it is it can be easily culturable. But in case of citrus greening, we can't culture uh, only through molecular techniques or in the live host. We should uh, maintain that uh, particular bacteria. So, and another difficulty is that it is very unevenly distributed throughout the tree. It's not like it will be everywhere. You see, some of the only symptomatic parts or some parts of the tree, it will it will be there. So again, that uh, poses a challenge for uh, its management. It is transmitted basically through uh, vegetative propagation and in the uh, field through uh, citrus sila. So to get rid of citrus greening, we have to aggressively control citrus sila first. So another difficulty is that these nutrient uh, uh, deficiency are closely associated with uh, this citrus greening disease makes the identification of this particular disease very uh, challenging. You can see here, you, you don't know whether it is a citrus greening, especially in the mandarin cultivars. Let me tell you this uh, blotchy mortal symptom we won't find. Mostly the predominant symptoms will be your zinc or iron deficiency. Uh, so sometimes it is uh, very difficult to uh, get whether it is um, uh, citrus greening or not. That's why diagnostic methods should be standardized and each and every plant should be identified. We have already uh, developed uh, the different diagnostic method for citrus greening by using uh, normal biological indexing, but it takes uh, five to six months time. Nowadays, PCR has come, PCR and real-time PCR also, and lamb-based technology is also there. And very quickly, we can identify uh, whether a plant is infected with citrus greening also. We have also published a, um, our uh, bulletin on citrus greening also, specifically diagnostic. We have surveyed uh, most all the citrus growing uh, regions uh, of our country and a uh, lot of infection we found. Uh, see, uh, I mean, starting from uh, 16 to 30%, 18 to 32%. Uh, so up to 50% uh, level uh, and, and slowly, slowly the, the infection level is uh, increasing day by day. Uh, we have also come out with a quick rapid test that is the iodine based uh, test um, that is based on the ability of iodine to bind the starch uh, just you have to rub it uh, one one uh, this uh, scratch paper or you have to take uh, you have to rub it and you have to put in an iodine solution uh, so by putting that particular your lipid in the iodine solution you come to know whether it is infected of course it, it is non-specific, it is not specific at all, but for only your uh, specific test, you have to go for PCR-based testing, but it will uh, give you an idea whether uh, mm, uh, your orchard is having citrus greening infection or not, uh, because it is based on the physiological uh, parameter. Uh, we assume that in case of greening infected plus, there is an elevated level of starch, 
inside the plant. So on that basis, we generally identify or detect the infection. This is ident kit, which can be regularly used for this. Uh, once I visited long back, I think some uh, 10, 12 years back uh, in the Sadguti orchard, it is uh, I think uh, near Karnul district uh, uh, in Andhra Pradesh. There I saw a Sadguti orchard and by the side of Sadguti orchard, a curry leaf plantation. So this type of things, I mean, if it is there, I mean, both the things are, I mean, curry leaf is a collateral host for citrus silla. So you can see here the, I mean, the uh, propagation of citrus silla will be in huge numbers and that will facilitate the infection of citrus screening. So this is, uh, such awareness uh, should be there within the growers. I mean, if some greening infection there and the presence of citrus silla is there, uh, so automatically, I mean, ap after a certain point of time, the greening infection will be much more. So uh, either by eliminating this uh, uh, curry leaf and all, uh, we can eliminate the source I mean, the propagation or the multiplication of citrus silla. So again, for its management, uh, you have to use the disease-free certified planting material. Uh, you have to aggressively control the vector. And uh, of course, uh, since it is a bacterial disease, generally we use uh, we, a tetracycline group of antibiotics. Of course, complete elimination will not be there by using this uh, uh, tetracycline group of antibiotics and some of the micronutrients like zinc sulfate and iron sulfate, you can you can reduce uh, the disease intensity. Little bit. Of course, you you will get a, some reasonable control, but hundred percent elimination of greening will not be there. Uh, this is uh, briefly about budget certification program. I think our directors have already mentioned about uh, the budget certification program. Same is with citrus greening also. Uh, you have to, uh, all the mother plants has to be kept uh, under a uh, insect food uh, screen house. Then you have to, uh, periodically you have to do uh, ad, uh, indexing, uh, whether uh, to have a check for uh, whether it is infected with breeding bacteria or other viruses. Then once you um, have a, uh, all the free, I mean, once you have all the plants have identified for free of any graft transmitted pathogen, then you can routinely multiply and then you can distribute to the farmers. So this is in a nutshell about the uh, certification program, which we also recommend for citrus greening disease also. All your uh, nursery materials should be free of uh, citrus greening disease. So um, at the end, uh, just I like to uh, summarize by saying that uh, fungal and bacterial diseases, which we have discussed so far, are the one of the major constraints or the factors for dieback and decline throughout the country. And uh, some of the improved diagnostics, which I have mentioned, can be utilized for the um, uh, correct identification of the disease. Proper management of the disease starts with its correct identification. So that is, uh, that's why uh, the role of diagnostics uh, have come. And integrating several control measures like using your uh, healthy nursery materials, modification of cultural practices, stolen rootstocks, chemicals and biologicals, all this will help to prevent losses due to various diseases. Preventive measures is the key. See, if, uh, citrus is a perennial crop. It's not like a, a uh, annual crop, uh, like dal, chawal, gehu, or some vegetables. No. So un, in those cases, if you commit some of the mistakes, you get time to rectify in the next season. But in case of citrus, it is very difficult. No, it's citrus plants remains in your orchard for 15 to 20 years at least. So while planting also from the plantation level, to various uh, your man, um, management practices, which one should be very careful. So that's why I mean, integrating the several control measures is the key uh, to curb or to manage the various disease infecting citrus. And awareness needs to be created among all the stakeholders, including citrus growers, functionaries, or state agriculture departments and public representatives regarding various disease symptoms and control strategies. This is another important point. And some of the points which I've already mentioned, like things like soil solaration, contains nursery, uh, pruning of regular pruning of dead woods uh, after harvesting. And one should not uh, allow the water stagnation in his orchard. And uh, high budding uh, for phytophthora management is very important. Uh, uh, that's nine to 10 inch bud, uh, budding height, uh, both uh, before at the time of uh, preparation of uh, nursery materials or at the time of planting in the orchard. So these uh, things uh, should be taken care and Bordeaux pesting is a very good uh, preventive measures uh, uh, for phytophthora diseases. 
you have to uh, control the vectors regularly and some of the biocontrol agents like trichoderma uh, can be utilized for uh, improving the efficacy towards uh, the control so this is uh, in a nutshell uh, about uh, different ages uh, so i would I like to acknowledge the help of my co-workers who have helped me in uh, different uh, phases of this particular work thank you thank you so much Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Das, sir. If you yeah, have any sir. any queries, yeah, yeah, audible. If somebody has any queries yes. or if you have any queries, please. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Yes. Sir, how I much prevalent is this for lung disease? Pardon? Sir, how much uh, like prevalent is this Huanglong Bing disease in India as compared to U.S.? Is it more or less? You cannot say it is more or less. It is there. I mean, it is since uh, say uh, Greening is reported uh, in the 1960s uh, in India, but it was there. If you see the literature it, in the 1920s, uh, the citrus seal, the diaphorina citri has been reported and the, all those uh, symptoms were described at that point of time. But greening as a pathogen, uh, it was first described in the 1960s. And as far as our survey record goes, we, we uh, recorded uh, uh, up to 50 to 60 percent uh, infection in some of the orchards. So it is there. It is endemic in our country. Okay, sir. And so you have mentioned like this. Especially in the, in the sweet orange and mandarin group. Okay, sir. Okay, okay sir. And so like you have mentioned like this 50% yield loss due to Huanglong being, in, uh, Huanglong being in USA. Like how much yield loss in India? Is there any record? No, it, it is not uh, a particular uh, record is uh, not there. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, yield loss because uh, along with uh, Huanglong being so many other factors is there. So yes, so fungal uh, not, disease. No, okay. uh, yeah, okay. not such specific record. I mean, uh, related to uh, greeting is there in our country. Okay, sir. And sir, is there any chemical control method available for this Huanglong thing? Chemical control, we uh, generally advocate the tetracycline group of uh, um, chemicals uh, like of uh, litromycin and some of the uh, tetracycline hydrochloride that can be used. Of course, 100% control will not be there uh, to okay, a certain sir. extent. And uh, along with the tetracycline, some of the application of some of the micronutrients like your zinc sulfate, iron sulfate. Uh, and in uh, recently in AICRP, one trial is also going on uh, um, by adding more uh, phosphorus also. So those things we are trying, but greening is a very difficult uh, thing to control. Let me tell you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, another question I want to ask is. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, what is the approach we are following, like while breeding, uh, while uh, developing the resistant variety? Are we interfering with the disease genes, or are we also interfering with the fungal genes to make it, like uh, the to make the plant resistant? Uh, we are both the things. I mean, we are of course. Uh, I mean, uh, breeding the perennial crops is not that easy, no. It's yes, sir. Breeding yes, our, sir. if you see the, I mean, background of breeding work, it is very less in our country, uh, because uh, breeding a perennial crop like citrus is not that easy. And yes, sir. Our yes, sir. institute also tried a little bit, but uh, so far uh, we, we we didn't, uh, I mean, come across anything which is showing any resistance as far as breeding material is concerned. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And so you have mentioned uh, like while discussing the bacterial disease, like there are many wild varieties which are resistant to this bacterial diseases. Mm -hmm. Sir, are there any wild varieties which are resistant to like fungal diseases also? Uh, they are there. I mean, uh, for, uh, for uh, to cite an example for Phytophthora, there are uh, some trifoliate and its hybrid, uh, uh, they are reported. And we okay, have sir. also identified in our case, one rootstock species that is Alemo. Of course, it is Alimo. not uh, Alimo, that is citrus macrophylla, which is okay, a okay. uh, moderately tolerant. Uh, of course, uh, total 100% resistance or tolerance is not there. Uh, just, I okay, mean, uh, by comparing it with the existing uh, 
varieties or the known rootstocks like rough lemon and ankulai we are seeing the degree of tolerance amongst the different uh, roots of species which are available right now okay sir okay thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir for your wonderful lecture on uh, citrus uh, diseases fungal and bacterial diseases especially phytophthora sir sir uh, is there any uh, new antibiotics against this uh, bacterial canker in citrus sir no no recently one uh, you know cibr there that is one uh, news have come up that they are discontinuing uh, this continuing this uh, streptocycline isn't it ah, but yes, uh, uh if you see the civrc list only that uh, streptocycline is there i mean not other men. of course i mean unofficially so many things will be there uh, yes, yes. but uh, till date uh, we really don't know i mean what will be the alternative some things we have to i mean sit and chalk out our strategy what are the things uh, to be utilized uh, because yes. streptocycline basically is a combination of streptomycin and tetracycline Yes, sir. And uh, now there's uh, there are a lot of issues also. You know, health issues are, I mean, uh, eco friendly and how uh, this health hazards, all these things. So people are discontinuing the use of antibiotics in agriculture. Uh, but but uh, some of the cases, uh, you know, uh, uh, perennial crops is uh, in case of bacterial infection is very difficult. For to cite an example, in case of uh, this. Uh, Mm, um, apple and pear also in foreign countries also they use uh, some of the uh, antibiotics in a limited extent of course uh, but again i mean uh, we have to see any any is there any new chemicals which are available some uh, some things like uh, bromanol some of the chemicals which are not truly antibiotics some of the antimicrobials uh, now people are talking uh, that can be utilized of course those things have to be tested right now uh, we don't have any anything i mean as an alternative for streptocycline for that matter okay sir Thank sir good sir. evening sir yeah good evening please uh, sir uh, i'm dr ramaya of um, uh, professor in entomology in uh, horticulture college anantra pet yeah sir i have small doubt sir uh, in earlier uh, honglong means it is a viral disease Mm. No, there is a confusion it is a bacterial like that sir. no no now there is no confusion it is 100% bacteria only okay 100% ah uh, yeah which is known uh, citrus greening disease uh, the yes. other name of citrus greening disease is wang long bin and yes, the bacteria sir. has been identified and they have named also it is candidatus liberivector asiaticus okay uh, see it is so, uh, belongs to uh, the rhizobiaceae uh, family of bacteria yes, and yes, it is sir. transmitted by citrus cilia known as diaphorina citri okay okay sir uh, sir for detection is there any uh, temperature variations uh, detection is uh, uh, not proper because earlier some papers uh, have studied the temperatures are uh, high temperatures so the disease is not detected like that sir is there any literature on that one sir do you have the experience ah, actually what happens you know this high temperature this bacteria get suppressed uh, the tighter the concentration of the bacteria in the uh, tissue material whether in the leaf yes, tissue or the stem tissue uh, okay. with with heat uh, it it uh, it it suppressed actually yes, so uh, even in if you see recently in foreign countries they are uh, they are trying this uh, heat application okay. also heat treatment okay. to eliminate this uh, particular bacteria okay hmm. okay they are, they are yeah. erecting some uh, polythene you, you know plastic tents uh, okay. over the over the uh, over the uh, sweet orange plant to get rid of this particular disease okay okay so, so there is a variation because yeah. uh, here uh, high temperature prevailing conditions are there in uh, uh, the royal sima okay. so at that time is the the honglong beans are uh, it is not detected so uh -huh. the literature is there so for that only i am uh, putting yes, some that is absolutely true so for detection state. purpose the, the i mean your this uh, october november to this january february that will be the yes. best time uh, yes, so at that point of time the temperature will be on the lower side so okay. uh, there will be every chance to i mean get the bacteria or detect the bacteria in your whatever uh, methodology you you adopt okay okay thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir any other queries Oh, yeah. If there are any queries, kindly 
uh, please uh, clarify your doubts. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Lakshmi Reddy, sir, uh, are you are you present, sir, in this uh, platform? Lakshmi Reddy, sir. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Please, sir. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, sir, sir, this is uh, Srinu Vasul, sir, from uh, College of Horticulture, Anantaraj Peta. Ah, uh, uh, sir. Thank what? you, sir, for, for your presence in. Thank you, sir, for your presence in today's meeting. Uh, sir, I would like ah. to, uh, uh, for the information of uh, today's guest speaker, uh, sir, I would like to introduce uh, one of the eminent personality. Uh, who is a retired joint director of horticulture. Uh, he is also there in today's uh, program, sir. Uh, this is for the information of the guest speaker, uh, Dr. Das, sir. Okay. Uh, and, uh, he was uh, an eminent, uh, he was uh, basically he was a citrus expert uh, with a lot of uh, field experience. So even after the uh, retirement, uh, he will be uh, seen uh, moving with the farmers even today okay. at the age of 80 and plus. I think you may be uh, knowing his name, uh, Sri Vempali Lakshmi um, uh, He is a mentor for me and uh, I had the opportunity to work under him uh, for almost a decade time. Okay. Uh, yes. He was also there in this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I think, sir, uh, Lakshmi Nadi, sir, uh, uh, sorry that I, I could not able to um, send you the link uh, at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I think you have followed this uh, um, lecture, yes, sir. I have fully followed this lecture. Yes, sir. It's yes, very, sir. very nice and quite sir. informative also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, um, thank you, sir. Das, sir, for, for your excellent presentation. Uh, as our uh, Lakshmi Reddy, sir, told, it is very, very elaborate. Your lecture is very elaborate. Uh, uh, and highly informative uh, with really uh, very vivid uh, uh, pictures of uh, symptoms, sir, uh, both fungal and bacterial diseases. Sir. And, uh, and uh, I tell you uh, that uh, this is one of the best uh, uh, guest lectures uh, that are being uh, arranged in this uh, Citrus Graduate Readiness Program. Uh, so far, we have covered 22 guest lectures. Yes, and sir. this is going... Yeah, and this is going to be uh, the one of the best guest lectures uh, we had in a series of 30 guest lectures program for this uh, citrus graduate readiness program. Thank you. Uh, I once again uh, uh, thank you, sir, for your excellent presentation on this uh, uh, today's topic, uh, uh, current uh, status in uh, diagnostic approaches and uh, uh, management strategies uh, uh, for fungal and bacterial disease of citrus. Uh, if there are no queries from the participant side, uh, uh, may now request uh, Dr. Na Nalini to kindly propose formal vote of thanks to the uh, today's chief guest. Dr. Nalini is there? Yes, yes sir. She is there, <clears throat> sir. Sir, in chat box, Please. one portion is there, sir. In chat box. Containerized yes, yes, system sir. whether yes, it can be yes, used for papaya. That is asked, sir, in that uh, chat box. This containerized system of growing nursery, whether it can also be used for... Uh, uh, papaya, uh, the one question is there, sir, in chat box. Papaya, madam, I cannot tell you, but this system, I mean, it is uh, foolproof in case of citrus. So any papaya scientist, if somebody is there, I mean, you will be the best person to answer his query. Uh, but this continuous nursery system, I mean, uh, this is the state of art and uh, everywhere is being followed in case of citrus. I mean, all the citrus culture, especially the uh, the but uh, you know through budding which is uh, vegetatively propagated uh, plants like citrus uh, it is uh, right now it is recommended um, the best propagation method Madhusudan is also there uh, in this meeting Madhusudan uh, Edgar no he is away Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right, right. Uh, uh, now I request uh, Dr. Nalini to kindly propose formal vote of thanks to the to our today's uh, guest speaker, please. Good evening, all the dignitaries. Uh, 
डॉक्टर टी जानकी राम सर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर डॉक्टर वाइस आर एच यू डॉक्टर ए एस पद्मावतम्मा मैम डीन डीन ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर डॉक्टर वाइस आर एच यू ऑल द रिस्पेक्टेड यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफिसर्स गेस्ट स्पीकर डॉक्टर ए के दास सर प्रिंसिपल साइंटिस्ट आई सी आर सी सी आर आई नागपुर एसोसिएट डीन ऑफ ऑल द कॉलेजेस ऑफ डॉक्टर वाइस आर एच यू डॉक्टर के टी रमणा सर प्रिंसिपल साइंटिस्ट एंड हेड एच आर एस अनंतराज पेटा प्रिंसिपल साइंटिस्ट एंड हेड एच आर एस अनंतराज पेटा एच आर एस सी आर एस तिरुपति डॉक्टर आर नागराजु सर डॉक्टर सी मधुमति मैम प्रिंसिपल साइंटिस्ट एंड हेड सी आर एस पेटलूरु all the course coordinators organizing committee members students and all other participants joined for today's session i am glad to express my vote of thanks on behalf 